a player's distance iron category is becoming more and more popular in the golf industry. We've got seven models here from the past couple of years. We're going to test them out on TrackMan and tell you the differences. Start with that fourth shot. That fourth shot did not mm. feel very good. It was a bad swing, but it was so forgiving. Hey golfers, Drew Mahold and Thomas Campbell here in the second swing Minnetonka Tour van. We've got a fun test for you today, testing seven different players distance iron models. Uh, we did this maybe oh, a little over a year ago, I think. We tested seven players distance iron models. We've got some of those that were still in that test with us today, but we've also got some new ones uh, that were released over the past year or so that we'll uh, throw in the test, we'll compare them. Thomas is gonna have a bunch of shots for us. And you know, Thomas, this, this category is becoming more and more popular. Kind of a lot of golfers fitting into that range between a game improvement iron and then maybe between something that's you know a player's iron more compact. This is that sweet spot for a lot of golfers. So I'm curious to see how this all turns out. And uh, these, these irons are all, they're hot, but they're also workable, but then they also have that forgiveness in there too. Yeah, they're, they're good looking irons. So a lot of players like to look a little sleek at club head looking down at, but they want some added forgiveness. Mm -hmm. They want some added extra juice. They want to hit the ball a little bit further. This is where it's at, the player's distance iron category. I'm going to expect a little less spin today. I'm, I'm a player that typically doesn't spin the ball that much. So naturally, I'm probably going to hit these irons fairly far, mm -hmm. um, but they are still workable. I think it was December 2019 when we last did this video. So we've got three or four new models out here to compare and a couple that are still in line here. I'm excited to test them. Mm. So Thomas, the seven models that we've got today, we've got the Titleist T200, we've got the Mizuno JPX 921 Forged, we've got the TaylorMade P790, we've got the Ping i500, the Cobra King Forged Tech, Shrixon ZX5, and the Callaway Apex 21. Lots of explosiveness there. Uh, you ready to hit some shots? Yeah, they're all gonna be hit with the Nippon Moldus 120S golf shaft. This is the golf shaft that I have in every single club head available here at Second Swing in our tour van. So it's gonna be a very, very unbiased test. Perfect, let's get after it. Let's do it. All right, Thomas, that was six shots with the JPX 921 Forged from Mizuno. Um, I know we've talked about feel in the past. Um, pretty sol solid performance here, too. Yeah, I mean, Mizuno, they always feel good. Mm -hmm. all, all their irons feel exceptionally good. With it being forged, it feels even better. One thing I do notice with the Mizuno JPX 921 Forged is from heel to toe, there's a little bit more surface area. So it seems like it's a little bit more on the forgiving side. This looks a little larger from heel to toe. Interesting, okay, interesting. And then as we see here, maybe one outlier there in terms of maybe a little shorter, but we'll get to that later. But pretty solid, I mean, you're kind of splitting hairs here, right? You got a uh, few on the right, few on the left, but overall pretty straight, so. Yeah. What's next? What's next? Let's go to, let's go to Ping. Let's go to Ping I-500 here. Okay. All right, Thomas, Ping I-500. Um, I noticed a little bit louder sound, um, just from my vantage point. What did you notice? And I think we can also talk about that fourth shot you had. Well, yeah, start with that fourth shot. That fourth shot did not mm. feel very good. It was a bad swing, but it was so forgiving. The spin rate was a little bit lower on that, on that shot, mm -hmm. but notice where it ended up. And that's kind of the more important thing, is you get some forgiveness out of these distance players' irons there as well. Yeah. But noticeably, a little bit less spin, a little bit more ball speed and a little bit higher golf shots with the i500 versus the JPX 921 mm -hmm. Forged. It definitely sounds loud, feels a little firmer, so the, the JPX 921 Forged felt a little bit softer, but I could probably sure. get over that with regards to the forgiveness. Right, yeah. for sure. Well, uh, we can move on then to, let's try, let's do Titleist T200 here. Okay. Thomas T200 there, um, another pretty good dispersion. I noticed it was much softer sounding. Um, what did you think about that? Maybe compare it to like the feel and sound too of I500. Yeah, it was really noticeable. Mm -hmm. I500 was loud, mm -hmm. a little bit firmer feeling, while the T200 felt softer off the face, a lot quieter off the face there as well. One thing I noticed also, they might seem like the spin consistency was pretty good with this. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen the numbers yet, but I feel like the consistency was pretty good. They're all kind of around about the mid 4000s when I was hitting this club. Yep, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can see that up here. Very consistent, you know, yeah, mid to low 4000s of all of them. So pretty good stuff from Titleist there. Um, you know, now I'm 
thinking Callaway Apex 21. Let's do it. Okay, Thomas, Callaway Apex 21. We did see a bit of a trend emerge there, but um, I also noticed it was still one of those maybe softer sounding irons. Um, what did you think about that? Yeah, it was kind of interesting. I was drawing the ball every single time mm -hmm. with that club. Um, now, I'm used to looking at an iron that's very similar to this when I'm playing, kind of noticing at a dress when I was comparing it compared to the couple of the others. I'm just seeing a little bit more pointed on, on pointed toe look at, okay. at a dress there. I don't know what it is, and obviously these are all standard lie angles against each other there too, but for some reason I was able to turn the ball over a little bit more, maybe a little bit to do with that pointed toe, I'm not yeah. sure, but these are all standard lie, uh, but it was consistent. I, I like to play a little draw, and I was pretty happy with that ball flight. Yeah, you had all six shots end up just left of the center line there, and I know that's the, the trajectory that you're looking for, so it's very interesting that that worked out with the Apex 21. Yeah, also the top line, um, T200, the club before that, very, very sleek top line, what mm -hmm. I've kind of noticed. It almost kind of looked like the T100, but just a slightly different head. While Apex is just a little bit larger, so a little little thicker top line with the Apex, so a little bit more, maybe slightly more forgiving, I don't know, but it, yeah, just a little bit, little bit larger profile. Interesting. Yep. Hmm. Um, all right, well, we can go on to club number five here, Strixon ZX5. Okay. All right, Thomas, Shirkson ZX5 there. A couple things I noticed. Um, seemed like higher ball flights on average, and it seemed like it was just a little bit louder sounding compared to maybe the past couple models. Yeah, not quite as loud as, say, I-500 was, but it was definitely was louder than the Apex and the T-200. One thing I noticed was, with the exception of the one shot, I hit it basically dead straight every single time. It was mm -hmm. high and straight, which was really kind of interesting. Uh, it's a good looking club too, like talking about your know, looks with this club, one of the sleeker looking ones, thinner top line, I definitely approve, this is a, this is a great looking club. Yeah, yeah. Frickson Irons have always looked awesome, uh, so they delivered once again with ZX5 and ZX7, uh, so yeah, and good initial impression here uh, with the ZX5, but now we can get to, let's go to Cobra King Forge Tech. Okay. All right, Thomas, the Cobra King Forge Tech here, um, to me it sounded a tad bit on the loud side. Um, and then also wanted to comment, so it is, um, I believe, the strongest loft, or tied with the strongest loft, I think, in this set. So it's not a huge surprise, I guess we saw it as probably the farthest carry distance so far. Yeah, it's the only club that is under 30 degrees of loft, so it's 29 and a half. Uh, there were three or four shots there that I did carry the ball over 200 yards. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time we've seen that yet. There was a bit of a difference though. It was flying quite significantly lower than a couple of the other models that we kind of noticed there as well. So it was maybe this talking power maybe wasn't kind of as strong. Now for me, with more speed, it's not a problem. But if you have a golfer that doesn't have this much speed, I'd be a little worried about the stopping power. Mm -hmm. For sure, for yeah. sure. Well, let's, let's wrap it up. Last but not least, TaylorMade P790. P790, Thomas, um, packs a punch, as we know. Um, what did you think about that? Uh, looks and feel, but also the performance. Yeah, I mean, at the end of this test, I had a couple of swings there that were maybe just a little bit off. Now we're gonna limit it to five, best five of six when we're testing all these heads. Even still, it was really forgiving. And even still, we would notice that, mention it packs a punch. It's got some, got some power in there, mm -hmm. still flew nice and high with a little extra distance, a little extra juice and forgiveness. And, it's in a slightly smaller profile compared to a couple other clubs in this category that are a little stronger lofted, but maybe we're not quite as forgiving. So this is a mm -hmm. great club. I've, I've always really been impressed with how the P790 iron has been in general. Oh yeah, for sure. So Thomas, I was taking my own mental notes kind of throughout in terms of the sound anyway. I wasn't hitting the clubs, I don't know the feel, but sound, it seemed like the softer ones were maybe you know, JPX 921 Forged, T200, Apex, um, maybe up there was Cobra King was kind of a, a kind of in you know both best of both worlds there. Um, what did you think about in terms of feel? And I think that obviously the rest I think you know in terms of the Strixon, uh, I500 or maybe a little bit louder. 
Yeah, I'd say you're, you're right up there with the, kind of those top three with regards to the sound. I'd say the softest sounding iron was probably T200. For mm -hmm. me, that just seemed the quietest off the face, uh, which is kind of interesting because it's, you know, we know it's not forged like right. it is, like the T100, but it looked kind of like the T100, but also felt pretty close there as well. So that impressed me. Yeah, that was, that was just the notes I had. And of course, you got to look at all of them and feel all of them. So is there any big takeaways from that aspect? Yeah, so I have a top three right here in, in my hand here on, on kind of look. So my three favorite looking irons were the Strixon ZX5, the Taylor P790, and the Titus T200. But looking down at a dress, for me, the biggest thing is I'm not seeing much offset on these irons. There's a couple others that is a little bit more offset. And I don't want to see a, a club that's got a lot of offset on it. For yeah. me, personally, this is why right. I chose these models. Yeah, and of course it is player dependent, so yep. um, you in particular kind of like less offset and you like softer sound and feel, right? But, yep. you know, of course a different player might prefer louder sound and maybe, you know, a larger club head. So uh, that's just the difference there, but of course, you know, now we can kind of get into the, the data, see what the data tells us about these irons, because again, this is that very popular uh, demographic of golfers looking at this specific category. Got it. Well, so for this test, I try to keep my swing speed right around about 88, 89 miles an hour. I think yeah. for the most part, we can see that we're about 88 and a half yeah. on average, pretty much on every single it's, kind of club here. It's pretty so, good. So yeah, I think you can see 88.5, 88.4, 88.4, 88.3, 88.5, 5, 88.6, 88.5. So yeah. well done in terms of the... <laughs> The club speed consistency there, Tom. Yeah, so we know that's the consistent across the board here. Now we can kind of generalize the numbers and see how everything else is going to perform. Mm -hmm. I want to take out also one miss set. There was probably an outlier per club. There may not have been, okay. but let's just make it because there was definitely a couple that I didn't quite catch. We hit all these shots in a row. I think there's 42 shots. Yep. Let's just see if there's one outlier just to take out. All right, so Thomas, we've taken, I guess, you know, one of the, I guess, outliers um, you know some of these didn't really have an outlier per se but just to make it fair five now are up with each club and so you can see the dispersions here um, what do you see are the big takeaways here out of this dispersion map um, I mean there's some larger some smaller so what's the what's the big takeaway here yeah so I'm always looking for a circle that's smaller and I want to see a circle that if you if it's going to be larger I want it to be larger from left to right mm -hmm. I don't want it to be larger from north to south because that shows inconsistency on the carry distance there. Yeah. So, so if you kind of take a quick look here, you can kind of see general trends. And now, ballpark, they're all pretty close. You can obviously see they're all carrying in the mid-190 yard category. Mm -hmm. um, we can see if there's any general trends here. Straightest, maybe ping I-500. You can see the yellow circle is yeah. kind of in, in the middle there. I had one that I kind of pulled over there top left there. But otherwise, right. you can see that the others were kind of just kind of very close to the middle. See a general trend with Callaway, the Apex, twi Apex 21 was just a little bit more to the left side, yep. and so was the TaylorMade P790. Uh, I like to draw the ball a little bit, so I'm quite okay with that. Outside, I would make that adjustment. When I'm hitting into a screen that's only 12 feet in front of me, right. it's hard for me to kind of aim to oh, the yeah. right and then play that, that draw sure. there as well. So we just noticed maybe a little draw trend there to the left. Mizuno, and this is kind of always the case, it seems like when we do testing, we'll notice a trend a little bit more to the right. Yep. So we'll notice the, the white circle there. And now it's a, a little bit larger, but you notice there's those three white dots there over there to the right side. It's because the lie angle is just a little bit flatter with yeah. the Mizuno iron. Now these are all standard lie angles, but they're not all the exact same. Yeah. So Mizuno is about one degree flatter than other models. Mm -hmm. So that's maybe why we have a tendency over there to the right there. Uh, Strixon ZX5. Pretty good. You see those four shots that are very, yeah. very close to each other there too. So I'd say dispersion, that probably might be your kind of your, your winner right there, mm -hmm. right in the middle of everything, that arm yeah. circle. Yeah, that was, you know, that dispersion pr from Shrixon is pretty darn good. You have, um, I mean, Ping's got probably, these three, four are pretty close here, and then you have Titus has a few up there too. So there's, a, there's some good options out there. And of course, I know you like to play the draw, so you see that draw tendency there, and also kind of with Cobra as well little bit of that tendency to draw but um, and then in terms of numbers so we can kind of discuss in here you've got all of this data here Thomas um, I know you like to kind of just go through the different categories here so why don't we do that and I can sort things out for you here yeah that, we already touched on, touched on the club speed around about 88.5 even with that those outliers out but let's yeah. start with ball speed so we can organize ball speed from highest to lowest so first off we're seeing TaylorMade P790 again <laughs> Yeah. Uh, highest ball speed, 131.5. So even though the loft on that one is still not the strongest, the 
Cobra King Forge tech is actually the strongest loft, still generating more ball speed. Yep. So that definitely stands out to me right there. That and the Strixon ZX5 for sure were kind of ahead of the mm -hmm. bunch with regards to the ball speed numbers. Um, if you look here, we can skip over launch angle. That's not going to change too much. That's my golf swing. That's also the loft mm -hmm. on the golf club. We notice they're all 17 to 18 there. Um, yeah. Let's look at spin. So spin is definitely going to be kind of important. So I'm looking at two things with spin. I'm looking at that little number. I'm looking at the consistency. Yep. And I'm also looking at the total number as well. So if we're going to look here, we can see there's kind of some general trends here. We can see that the Mizuno GPX 921 forged a little bit more spin. Probably partly to do with those three that would just generate yeah. a little bit more over there to the, to the right side. Uh, Strixon ZX5, you know, a little bit higher spin there as well. So that's interesting. So higher ball speed and a little bit more spin. Yeah. So it's interesting because that it, loft, so these are the two highest lofted in the test here. So both 31 degrees. Yep. So that is the highest spin is to be expected, right? But then we see, I believe Strixon also had the second highest ball speed. Um, of this test, which is a very interesting result from this test here. Yeah, the loft of 31 degrees on the Shrixon. I think that actually is yes, yeah. tied the highest. So that's kind of really kind of interesting there. Um, but you know, just a little bit more spin. That's what you would expect mm -hmm. out of a club that is going to have a little more loft. Now keep yeah. in mind, the loft on these clubs are 29 and a half to like 31 degrees. Yeah. So I'm not going to expect a whole bunch of spin. Yeah. This is going to be for those players that do spin the ball a lot and need to bring that spin rate down yeah. to help them generate a little more distance. Yeah. For me, I generally spin my 7-iron in the low 5,000s, and I have a 34-degree 7-iron. It's just my golf swing. I'm just a low spinner. That's why I would never play an iron like this, because I don't want right. to spin the ball at 4,300 mm -hmm. RPMs unless I want to hit the ball 200 yards every single time right. with carry. Mm -hmm. The reason why I only carry the ball 180, 185 is to do with that spin. I'm, I'm swinging the same club speed generally, about 88 miles an hour, but I'm going to generate more ball speed and less spin with right. a club that's got less loft on it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of interesting there. If we go to the other end of the spectrum with regards to spin, you can kind of see here, Forge Tech, you would expect that. It's got the lowest amount of loft, yep. least amount of spin there. Um, if you look, I-500 and TaylorMade P790, those two were a little bit on the on the lower side for the spin rate mm -hmm. there as well. So kind of interesting there across the board. Look at One the thing, consistency here with Apex 21. That's pretty impressive too. Yeah, we haven't even talked to talk about Apex 21 here, I don't think, because it's kind of being kind of in the yeah. consistency kind of right across the board here. We didn't talk about it with ball speed because it was like third. Yep. We talked about it with spin because it was like third. Yeah. So across the board, you can see that consistency number. That for sure stands out to me. I think there's one other, I think it was the T200. The spin consistency with yeah. that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. And also that Strixon ZX5 is also pretty good with a consistency yeah. number as well. So we're saying Strixon a lot. Yeah. It's kind of it's interesting here. You, you don't, yeah. That's a weird combination you wouldn't expect to be the result of this test. Highest ball speed and, well, not highest, but second highest ball speed and second highest spin. And then at the same time, one of the top spin consistency figures too. So that's a very impressive from Strixon ZX5. Yeah, uh, we can touch on carry distance. We don't really need to talk about total distance, but if you look at carry distance there, um, highest carry was TaylorMade P790, because it had the highest ball speed. Cobra King Forge Tech carry just a little bit further than the Strixon because it had quite a bit less spin on it. Mm -hmm. So it was going kind of a little bit further there. Um, but yeah, Strixon, Callaway, kind of in the middle there again, which is yeah. kind of interesting there to see. Uh, let's switch to height. So height is going to be really important because there was kind of a range. There was. Yeah. I think we noticed uh, right when we were testing, uh, when you're hitting the shots, we noticed Strixon was just a bit higher. And we're seeing, mm -hmm. I mean, it's the highest here in the final results. But um, this, is a, this is a big one because this is a category, again, like you said, a lot of players need that extra lift. Um, sometimes here and, and at this, but at the same time, there's also a lot of players that might fit into this category that hit the ball too high and they need to reduce the, the height. So interesting here, there is a kind of a range here. Yeah, height and landing angle. This is, this is really important in fittings because we don't want to fit a, especially for an iron, total distance doesn't mean anything. It's right. carry distance, it's stopping power is what you're mm -hmm. looking for. So we can see Srixon, height 128, is actually quite a bit higher than all the others. Ping is up there, so ping is kind of interesting how a little lower spin, also a little extra height. So that's kind of interesting there to see there. Uh, if you look at the other end of the spectrum, I think it was the Cobra was flying the lowest. Yeah. Uh, 107 and the MAP 790 was 113. So yeah, pretty kind of interesting mm -hmm. there for regards to height. Now keep in mind with my speed at 88 miles an hour, you'll notice that landing angle is all above 45. 45 is kind of like your, your gold standard with, with an iron for a player with my speed. Yeah. The player has less speed, you're not maybe not going to get to that 45 degree landing angle, but yeah. you want to try and get it at least in the 40s. Yeah. Because that's going to give you that stopping power. Um, so you can kind of see there, 
Yeah, we sort I could play any one of these irons because I generate enough stop and power. Right. Yep. Yeah, we sort this by the landing angle. You can see it's, um, some of those trends kind of are still there in terms of height, right? That's going to stay pretty similar. Um, but Shirksan again up there with the stopping power. And then Mizuno, of course, had also the highest loft. So there you go again. Both of the 31 degree models here with the highest loft also have the highest landing angle. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, Strixon did pretty well in this test, kind of right they across did. the board. Everything um, kind of noticed, you know, Callaway, Titleist, they were probably kind of in the middle, kind of right across the board there. Mm -hmm. um, Taylor MP790 is still pretty hot with oh, regards yeah. to the, the ball speed and a little lower on the spin, but you got some great options here. Right, I mean, we didn't talk about P790 being the most explosive ball speed, carry distance, and it's right in the middle of the pack in terms of the loft of these irons as well. So, and that's not, I mean, that's been the result of our tests like this before. P790 is just powerful. That's just how it is. And we saw it again in this test. So it's, and of course we talked about look and feel and how that varies depending on the player and the preferences there. So, but uh, this is some good data here, Thomas. A lot of good takeaways here. And uh, of course, golfers that are going to trade in their old um, irons to upgrade to one of these, that second swing, be able to come through a fitting and can maybe take a little bit from this, some of their, their favorites or the, the three to four models that they'd like to get uh, tested uh, during TrackMan and then get fit for with a second swing master fitter. So great stuff here, Thomas. Uh, I, I learned a lot. That really good stuff here from Strixon ZX5 too. Yeah, it was probably the winner today. It definitely stood out there with regards to consistency and distance and height. And mm -hmm. it was pretty impressive. Absolutely. Yeah. Golfers again, uh, first thank you for watching and then of course you can subscribe to our channel. Uh, we've got a bunch of content here moving forward. Uh, we love putting this stuff together. So uh, Thomas, thank you again for hitting the shots, giving your feedback today. Not a problem.